Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Um, my name is Gabriel Calatrava. I'd like to talk to you about the work that we do in the office at Santiago Calatrava Design. Um, so I'll start first with the, I guess, the philosophy of, of the work, of my father's work, especially the early uh, work that he started. <clears throat> so here's an image of uh, toys that were art toys that my father played with and made structural studies. He posed himself the problem of suspending an object in air and tying it down and the, by different methods of diverting the forces and the stresses, he would create different shapes out of it. So similarly as to suspend a roof over uh, people, would be, you'd have the shape of the roof and you could somehow bring the forces down into the ground in order to suspend it over it. Um, um, my father's projects have a lot to do with the artistic process which he embarks on. Um, which is usually from sculpture to drawing to uh, architectural drawings and to realization in construction. So I'm going to talk to you briefly about the turning torso and showing you a couple of early sketches of the turning torso. You can see the obvious inspiration of how, uh, the study of how the spine works and how a human body stands upright. You can see that he abstracted that by using platonic shapes such as cubes, spheres and cones and a simple idea is of a line, which he, which he, uh, which he uses a cable for. <laughs> I'll show you the sculpture here, which, we, uh, which he realized uh, in marble and uh, steel cable. Then uh, you see how the building crystallizes out of it. And because the structural intent was already built into the, to sculpt, into the sculpture, it was, um, it was easier to to uh, translate that into the real structure. As you can see here, night shot. I will uh, go further on into uh, the library. It's a Zurich library uh, for, of law. It's a special place for, um, uh, because it's the second oldest building in the University of Zurich and highly protected. It was a project which was completed in 2004 in Zurich. It's the second oldest uh, building in, uh, from the University of Zurich and therefore restricted under something the Germans call Denkmalschutz, which is the preservations department. Uh, so in Switzerland, they're being very, very strict about it. It was imperative that the structure would have minimal invasive uh, connections into the existing structure. So what my father did here is to suspend a series of rings in the in the courtyard, which bridged over where the students would, would, house, would be housed and could study in sort of a very large round table. You can see how the structure here does not touch the wall. It only touches it when it's needed to connect, when the connection is needed for pedestrians to cross over. Uh, here is seating arrangement with the books in the back, with the stacks. Talk further over, I will talk to you about the uh, a bridge that uh, is a very unique bridge. It's a tubular bridge in Calgary. Uh, it was completed last year in 2011. So the veteran bridge connects, connects Calgary from east to west, from a residential area towards its city's business center. It's comprised of uh, uh, two bike lanes and two lateral walking uh, paths. It's lit at night in order to create a beacon and also for a safety perspective. Two, uh, two main restrictions uh, that we had to cons put, take in consideration for the design of this bridge, one of which is due to ice melt in Canada, northern Canada, the, uh, the river surges a great deal and the uh, helicopter landing pad, which is very close, has a very a shar a shallow approach cone, meaning that no structure can exceed over that approach cone in case there's a distressed helicopter that needs to land there. So that naturally uh, led us to choose a very compact profile, and the tube being a very efficient one in order to cross 120 meters. Uh, as you can see, the, the bridge is, uh, is partially glazed because of the severe cold. Um, this is uh, Museo do Amanhã, which is a museum which we're building down in Brazil. It is uh, going to be completed, I think, in the coming months. 
uh, and it is placed in uh, Pir Mawa, which is in pra uh, Praça Mawa, which is the founding port of uh, Rio de Janeiro. Uh, it comprises uh, to rehabilitate an old existing pier, and uh, what we've done is to create a, a, a roof structure which would house a flexible installation that would change over time. So the installation will be um, discussing the connections between art, philosophy, and science, and thusly needs to be updated as science evolves and the other subjects as well. <clears throat> uh, the environmental aspects of this, of this project were very strong, considered, strongly considered, and so we, we decided to put in a pool, instead of uh, as, as a barrier for people not to cross, instead of walls, because it would still open a line of sight. Also, the pool serves a function of cleaning and scrubbing the water from the bay by pumping it up in the back and then letting it run through through sandbanks and then pushing it back at the end of the pier into the bay. Obviously, the amount of water that gets cleaned is probably not significant in order to scrub the, the bay, but it was more of an educational, uh, uh, an, an educational statement uh, so that students could go there and look how these phenomenons work. Also, the solar paneling on the roof will adjust itself to be optimal to the sun. So as the, the, the day goes on, the roof of the building and the sides will change shape, also giving another point for teachers to, to instruct students on our place in the cosmos. The Liège train station, located in Belgium, in Liège, uh, was completed in 2009. It housed its history, the history of the city is pretty interesting due to its uh, involvement in the First World War and the Second World War. It is, as far as to my knowledge, the only city that has the Légion d'honneur attributed to all its citizens uh, due to the resistance that they had given to the French uh, against the Germans. Uh, it's peppered. The area in which the train station is in is the most depressed part of, this, uh, of, the, of, the, of the city and is uh, basically run by uh, brothels, red light district, and drugs it, back in, in the 90s. Now it's changed a little bit and for the better. The train station was located there as a hub of transportation in order to connect people that live there to Paris, you know, Brussels, Berlin in a very, very fast manner so that it, Liège could, could profit from a commuter economy as much as its own economy, local economy. Uh, Santiago Calatrava envisioned this uh, train station to be like a bus station. It is a place in which the process of boarding a train would be very short and very comfortable. And because the distances with a high-speed train are completely manageable as they are only an hour and a half to Paris, Brussels is 15, minutes, 15 to 20 minutes away, and uh, Ber Berlin is about an hour. As you can see, similarly to a bus station, it only houses a large roof which protects you from the elements. The rest is, is connected by an underground tunnel that you can come into on grade, and two bridges that lead you to the different concourses which float over the train stations. It is, the roof is all glazed, in order to ma uh, allow maximum light to enter in there. There's a commercial program in the bottom corridor, which lets you buy ticket tickets if you need them, although the cell phone has replaced that. You know, sandwiches, little supermarket, maybe a pharmacy. And there's a, an exhibit from the local museum in the back, which we showcase several paintings every month. The project was envisioned to revitalize a depressed area of a city, and in doing so has, has created a new type of economy in the area and has driven out the criminal uh, aspect and has made the area much more livable and much more comfortable for everyone that lives there. Following the tragic events of 9-11, we were lucky enough to be selected to participate in the competition for the PATH station. We were also fortunate enough to win this competition and embarked on designing an interconnected platform that would house train systems, subways, commercial spaces, and also the pedestrian walkways connecting towers one through five on the site. Also, 
creating a passageway under the West Street, which would lead people an easier connection towards the waterfront from the city center. The path station is mostly underground and has a very highly complex nature to its project due to the many functions that it must house and also the coordination of many different functions and organs of government body that needed to be implicated into this process as the history of Manhattan started in that, lo in that area. And the project is made up of three main parts. The oculus part, which is the structure that emerges over ground, uh, which is a two wing, it's a wing dome uh, with purlins, white purlins, which will provide shade for the outside and also uh, the glass which will allow daylight to come down three stories in underground. The second part of the, uh, the project is the main concourse in which you will be granted access towards the path trains which lead to New Jersey. The third part is the east-west corridor which connects pedestrians from the, from the train station to the west side to have access to the waterfront. It was very important to to honor the day by lifting up the experience of everyone that, that walks through the train station. Also, um, the idea of, of having passengers treated with dignity um, as they walk through the train station is a very, very fundamental core part of, of, of this project. Uh, furthermore, um, we hope this will be the second Grand Central Station in, in New York and a great transportation hub in order to you know, sort of uh, house uh, people that are coming into the city and leaving the city uh, in, a, in a dignified manner. I guess to summarize a little bit about the office uh, on the philosophy which drives the work here is um, mainly a discussion between art, engineering, technology, and civic works realized in a physical space. So we mainly work uh, very closely to sculptures that were created and paintings and drawings as a research form and translate these into structural and spatial forms. Um, the process involves a lot of time working and tweaking and analyzing many different aspects and trying to discern the best solutions out of it in an aesthetic way and in a functional way.